Many developments from overseas now, including the president weighing a troop withdrawal from Afghanistan. The Pentagon says an American service member was one of at least 45 killed in a Taliban suicide attack at a military base near Kabul. Adam Kinzinger serves on the Foreign Affairs Committee. Congressman, good morning and welcome back yeah, here. Good morning. I'm going to go through a couple topics on Afghanistan. What is your sense about the level of violence there and how that may or may not influence the president's decision? Well, I think it should influence him to stay, to double down, to say that, you know, obviously terrorism is not eradicated. They are still coming after Americans. They have a saying, America has the watches, we have the time. The only way they'll ever beat us is to beat us at our will. Uh, so my hope is he doubles down and in that process says, look, we're happy to negotiate with the Taliban to find a way out, but they're not going to beat us on the battlefield. And I think we can get a negotiated solution that's favorable well, in that context. Does it appear that he's leaning in that direction? Would you suggest the same in terms of doubling down on Syria? Yeah, I think when I say double down, it doesn't mean double the number of troops. It means double commitment. Just say, look, if you look at Iraq, for instance, when President Bush did the surge, it wasn't the addition of 20,000 troops that really made the difference. It was the fact that when everybody told him to leave, he said, I'm staying. And we saw our enemies turn on a dime and actually become our allies. So I think it's important to put that message out that we won't be defeated by our will, but we want to negotiate a way out of this. Do you think someone at the White House has his ear on that? I oh, I do. I mean, I... I've met with the president a couple times on this, and he's very introspective. He listens. I think Rand Paul has outsized uh, influence on the president on this. He uses very kind of seductive language like bring everybody home, you know, no more. We can't have any more people get injured. And that as a commander in chief, that's tempting because you never want to see people get injured or hurt. But being commander in chief means you have to make tough decisions sometimes. Uh, wow, that's in interesting. Let's, let's see where that goes. Well, you have a prediction on the shutdown? Where, where do you think? Where do you think that goes? You know, look, the president made a great offer, I think. It's fine if the Democrats don't like it. They need to counter offer with something serious, and they're not doing that. But in terms of what actually happens, I've been out here. I'm starting my ninth year. Um, usually some solution will come out of the Senate. That's what I've seen in the past. I hope the Senate can come up with some kind of a negotiated solution that we can get out of this, because there's so much damage being done. And ultimately, even if one side wins, do you really win after all this? I don't think so. I think we're all kind of losing Do you out think here Democrats right have ideas in immigration? If so, where are they? Where, where's the list? I think they have an idea, but it's no border security. I mean, it's just basically straight amnesty. It's, it's liberalize the immigration system. I want an immigration system that's very generous, but we have to have border security in the process to make it actually work. So again, if you don't like it, Nancy Pelosi counter with something that's realistic, but be, let's be honest, that counter can't be no wall. Give me some money for the wall, call it a barrier, call it unicorns and puppies, I don't care what it's named, but ultimately it's a part of border security that's essential. And then we can fix a lot of this other stuff, and Americans will be happy well, if we as do. A, I remember the U.S. military, just want to ask you about the Supreme Court ruling yesterday on transgenders. Apparently it will revert back to the prior rule, uh, prior to President Obama's declaration. Department of Justice said this, Department of Defense is the authority to create and implement personnel policies. It has determined are necessary to best defend our nation. Due to lower courts issuing nationwide injunctions, our military has been forced to maintain a prior policy that poses a risk to military effectiveness and lethality for over a year. Do you agree with that statement, sir? Yeah, I think it's important that the military does have the ability to make that decision, and the commander-in-chief does, too. I, I know this is a social issue of, you know, the utmost of debating right now, but there's two points. If somebody is currently transgender and has been through all that process, that's one separate issue. But if somebody joins the military and then decides they want to go through that, there's about a year or two where they are actually non-deployable because of the different therapies and things that they're going through, and that is a readiness concern. If you have somebody with a four-year enlistment, if 50% of that time they're not deployable that's an issue and we ultimately you know serving in the military is a privilege and we need people that are going to go out there and do everything they can to let's kill see, our enemies let's see where this goes sir thank you for your time adam kinsey you bet. unicorns and puppies are that's on order it. thank you for your time <laughs>